Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and I have a great project for you today. The last couple weeks I've been doing pop-up cards, but today I'm going to be doing a 3D project. So yay! Um, this one's a Christmas project, and maybe you already saw the title and saw what I'm going to be doing. So it's this cute little sweater uh, gift bag. And I love this because I think a lot of times we are looking for a gift that we can give our coworkers. You know, we wanna give them something and we don't want to, we, can, we can't afford to spend tons of money, right? Um, so this one's great because um, it just, it can hold, I'm, I'm gonna pull out the tissue paper here. It can pull, hold some like snacks. Um, so I've got in here, I've got, ooh, here. I've got some hot chocolate, I've got a peppermint stick, and I've got some snacks. Now, if you're also a good baker, there's enough room to like put like a little baked goods or some cookies in there. So, you know, but if you're not a good baker um, and you, you don't want to bake a, a whole bunch, you can like find some fun snacks to put in there. And then it can make a cute little gift. And then you just, kind of shove, get a small piece of, whoops, tissue paper. I'll put the peppermint stick after in afterwards. And then you just take it and put it inside the little, little gift bag. And then we add the peppermint stick, or you can add a candy cane, but I had these cute little peppermint sticks and they're kind of fun too. Um, and then you put it in there. You've got this cute little gift bag, yay. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make it. And it's not super hard either, but I'm going to have a project sheet, which I know you guys love my project sheet. So if you want to get a project sheet, um, or you wanna get my project sheets, then make sure you subscribe to my email list because every Saturday I send out a new project sheet. And this week it will be this one and it has the measurements on it, it has a supply list on it and uh, page two which I haven't actually made yet is going to have a diagram there is a bit of cutting we have to do for the bag piece um, it's not hard we just have to cut away a few pieces and I'm going to have a diagram so that you know exactly where to cut you can match it up to your piece once you've scored it and it will be easy peasy so this is not a hard one there are a few pieces to it and I'll show you you so you can decide whether or not you want to make it and I think you will want to make it because it is so adorable um, one of the things we are using the knit together bundle I'll show you in a second and that's what creates this cute pattern this cute knitted pattern and then we've got the dies that cut out these little pieces and today I'm going to make this in a different color so you can see what a green sweater would look like and i'm going to cut these little pieces in a slightly different way so um, i hope um, you're going to love this and if you are watching me live or even if you're watching me after the fact please ask a question while I'm doing it at the end. Um, I always go back and see if there's any questions that I can answer and um, I can get those um, answers to you right away. All right, let's switch over to my other camera and I'm gonna show you how to make this. All right, I'm gonna set my little bag aside. Oh, I'm gonna throw my bag across my table. Good thing it's a sturdy thing. <laughs> All right, here is the Knit Together Bundle and it has this big background stamp. I've already got it mounted. This is an F block. If you don't already have an F block and you're a stamper, you're gonna need a big block um, for this. The good thing is once you've got this block, you can use it with other background stamps or a cool thing that you can do with the F um, block as well. If Even if you've got like a whole bunch of different stamps, you can, um, cling them all to the big background and make your own background stamp. So that's kind of a neat thing. Um, it's good to have an F block, but um, not everyone will have one of these. So make sure you pick it up if you wanna use this bundle. So here's the bundle. Um, when you buy the two things together, you save 10%. You can also buy them separately if you wish. The nice thing is we can personalize our sweater. I use the deer 
on the uh, red sweater, but I think I'm gonna use the little Christmas trees on the next one so we can see what a different pattern would look like. Um, and then I also used um, the frosted gingerbread uh, stamp set. And for this, I just used the greeting. Um, so if you have a different greeting you wanna use on the front of your sweater, you're welcome to. I love this little one, wishing you a Merry Christmas. It fits in a circle really well. And since we're using the layering circles dies, that meant that I didn't need another die set for this piece. Um, the layering circles are your real, basic dies that you probably absolutely need as a paper crafter if you don't already have these um, smooth circles, scallop circles. There's just lots of different uses for circles in paper crafting and it's kind of like a standard thing that I think most people need to have um, is circles because they're very hard to cut nicely with scissors with free hands. So very important tool. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. So I'm going to pull out my Simply Scored and I'll need my little scoring tool. And we're going to use shaded spruce cardstock. I think it's a really nice Christmas green. So that way I can show you the two side by side, a red one and a green one. So you're going to need, we're going to start off by making the bag part of this piece. So this piece measures nine and a quarter inches by eight inches and put that nine and a quarter inch side up at the top first and we're going to score at the half inch mark and if oh see i made a little oh stand up when you're scoring because it's so much easier sitting down and scoring is not good so okay come down on the half inch mark it's much easier to get nice pressure all the way down when you're standing up half inch mark, two and a half inch mark, six and three quarter inch mark, and eight and three quarter inch mark. Turn it to the eight inch side, and then we're going to score at the half inch mark, and the two and a half inch mark. All right, now you're gonna need some scissors. Pull those out. And I will have a diagram, a cutting diagram for you. So um, that will be on the project sheet. So you can kind of see my score lines. We're going to need to cut away um, this corner area here this corner area here and then we're going to cut up along here to create a tab so let's um, just go ahead i'm going to start by cutting up along this line right here just to the second score intersection i also sometimes like to do this on my paper trimmer because i get really straight lines if i do that so i'm going to cut up to the second score intersection on all of these here. Okay, so you can see I kind of cut along this bottom piece, okay? And I've cut up along to the second score intersection on all of these pieces. So I'm gonna come to the side now right here where there's a long skinny one and I'm gonna angle cut this away. I'm gonna create a, a side tab. I'm just gonna pull that piece away. So you can see there's now a side tab here. Do the same thing for the other side, cut this away. All right. And then um, down here, we're just gonna cut, we need this we need this tab right here, but we don't need these ones right here. So we'll just cut along here and cut along right here. Okay. So that is what it looks like when you finish cutting those pieces away. And I'm going to have that diagram and that will help you a little bit. But basically we cut away this piece, the little corner piece and this piece, 
this piece, the little corner piece and this piece, and then right here we've got cuts coming up as well too. All right, we can, oh, it says for me to fold it along the score lines. I'm gonna follow my instructions because when I was not shooting this video, I was thinking, yay, this is the way that um, we should do it. So we can fold this piece along the score lines. So let's just do that real quick. And then we can set this piece aside while we finish off the front. We need to finish the sweater piece first. So if you wanna make them really crisp, you can use your bone folder to go over those, those score lines. Makes a nice crisp folding. Okay, all right. So now this is the bag piece and we can set this aside and we'll work on our front now, the sweater. All right, so we're gonna need three pieces that we're going to stamp. So let me just arrange those. And I'm going to orient them like this so that the rectangles are all like this. I do um, think that this pattern on here looks better oriented um, kind of up and down than on the side. So let me tell you the size of each of these pieces. This one, shaded spruce, is four and a quarter by five and a half. This piece here is two and a half inches by five inches. And this last piece is three inches by three and a half inches. And I'm gonna need a piece of car uh, paper. Let me just grab this to uh, protect my work surface a little bit. So we'll shove these aside and we'll put this first piece on here. And then we're going to take our big background stamp. And this can be quite heavy with the block. So I don't want to ink this um, thing up like this. This is shaded spruce ink on shaded spruce cardstock. It's hard to ink this up like this. So it's better to ink it up like this with the stamp facing up. And then just use this and pounce all over top of it until you've got good coverage. You can see here there's some bald spots, so you're just going to make sure it looks good. And just like with the scoring, I like to stand when using a background stamp because I want to be able to press down on the stamp to get good coverage. So I'm going to flip this over carefully so I don't get ink all over my fingers lift it up. I'm going to kind of check to see where it is. I'm kind of peeking down. It is a little bit bigger. My stamp's a little bit bigger than my cardstock, so I should be able to get it fairly good on there. And then I'm going to press down with both of my hands, give it a little bit of wiggle, leave it on there for a few seconds because you want that ink to sink in there. Make sure you've got good coverage and then lift up. I'm gonna have to pry this off. See, I managed to get it on pretty, pretty straight. And then flick it off. Look how gorgeous that is. It just looks like I knit some cardstock. I love it. Okay, next piece. This is actually going to be the arm piece. The piece we just stamped right here, this is going to be the body of the sweater. So then we're gonna come along here, ink this again. All right, and turn it over. And we're just gonna line this up, make sure I've got good coverage, and then press down again. All right, pry this off, okay. So that piece is done. And then finally, we've got this piece right here. And we're gonna ink this up again. One more time. And we'll stamp this piece like this. 
this white piece is going to become the collar and the cuffs for our sweater. Okay, so it's going to look a little different, a little contrast to the actual sweater. And I think for now that's all we need to stamp. So let me place this somewhere where I'm not going to stick my fingers on it because that would not be good. All right, let me get rid of that piece now. Okay, it's time to do some die cutting. All right, I'm just looking my, at my instructions, make sure I'm doing this in order. We'll take the biggest piece, the four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece. Going to bring in my stamp and cut and emboss machine. We've got base platform number one, thin die adapter number two. We're going to take one of our cutting plates, number three, and it's best to do it like this. So I'm going to just line this up right here. I'm going to take the second smallest, so it's this one. I'm second guessing myself. Let me just align this up and make sure this is indeed, you know what? I think it's actually the third smallest. I was wrong. I need to change my instructions. Need the third smallest. I think that lines up, right? Yep. Yeah. The third smallest. I thought that looked wrong. I will make sure I amend my instructions. This morning I measured it and I thought, huh. Okay, so for this, if you want to make sure this is true, 100% true in terms of um, uh, that the circle is right in the center. You can eyeball it, or you can make yourself a little mark. So um, down here at the bottom, I've got um, my ruler. And so if I measure over two and one eighth inches, approximately right there. So that's my center mark. So if you're nitpicky like me, you can make yourself a little centering um, point so that you know where to kind of place your circle. You can eyeball it a little bit better. And you're just going to place the circle half on and half off on this side and just make sure it looks centered. It does not need to be even if it's a little bit off, it's not going to make a difference in terms of your, your collar. You just want to make sure that it looks somewhat centered. Um, and then when that looks good, you're going to turn it around, place your second plate on top, and then we're going to run it through. We're creating the neckline of the sweater. All right. So that is what it looks like, and you can throw that little piece away. Now scoot this back over here, and we also want to create a pattern for the bottom of the sweater. So bring in your dies. Just want to point out one thing. If you want to use this zigzag piece, this zigzag piece is actually going to cut your piece into um, separate pieces. So I'm going to avoid this because I don't want to have to piece my front of my bag together. So, but this can be used for other things. Or if you do want to piece it together, yes, you could absolutely use it, but you will have to um, piece your um, sweater on the white piece that I'll add a little later on. But these ones will be a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to use these two with the crosses and then I'm going to use this um, Christmas tree one um, to create my pattern. So I'll just line up my piece. I want to have it um, kind of right along the edge here so I've kind of got things square. And I'm going to just position each of these kind of centered on this piece. And I like to have them down um, near the bottom 
because I want to also add a greeting to these. So this is my little Christmas tree. So I'm just trying to center the pattern. If you do a few of these, you're going to get really good at centering everything. And let me just line this up. And um, you might want to use like um, some post-it note, which I have. Come here. Like a little post-it note. And once you've got these where you want them, just kind of pin them down with a little piece of post-it note so that they don't shift while you're running them through. Okay, so let's just run this through. Okay, carefully peel this off. And this is what you've got. And we're gonna back that up with some white, basic white cardstock afterwards so that you can really see this pattern. All right, I'm going to scrape off these pieces into the garbage. Sorry, we can't see that. All right, so our sweater piece is all done now. And then we're going to cut our collar piece. So again, I'm going to use the third largest and the third smallest dies to create that. So I'm going to, I want to reserve this end right here because I'm going to need that for my cuffs. That's why I stamped it all on one piece. So put your circles on one end of this piece. We're going to cut a donut shaped piece so make sure the inner circle is centered in the outer circle and then you're just gonna put the second plate on top and we're gonna run this through all right and we have our donut piece which will become our collar so I don't have a use for this but you might want to reserve it for something else and then I want to reserve this piece right here because we're going to use that end piece for the cuffs. All right, I think I have done all my die cutting. I'm running across the room because I want to create my sweater cuffs and I left my trimmer over there. So you're going to take this piece right here, this end, and I'm gonna line it up with a 3 8 inch mark, right about there. And then I'm gonna cut along there. So I'll have this piece right here. And then I'm going to cut this again at the one and a quarter inch mark. And again at the one and a quarter inch mark. All right, and so now I have two pieces and those will be our little cuff pieces. All right, oh, we need this trimmer one more time. So this piece will be the arms and we need to cut it in half. This is the two and a half inch side. So we're just gonna line this up at the one and a quarter inch mark. and we'll cut it in half and now we have the two arm pieces the nice thing was we could stamp both of them at the same time so that way we saved ourselves a little time so let's take the little cuff pieces and we're just going to glue these to the ends this just helps define the arms, makes the whole thing look a little better. Okay. And with the pattern on there, it also looks like they're all knit as well.
Okay, so now we're going to do the assembly of the sweater. So for this piece back here, I wanna add a piece of basic white so that you don't see into the bag and then you get a nice crisp piece back here, okay? So this piece back here, I cut it to four and one eighths inches by two and a half. If um, you want to, it can be four and a quarter inches, but then just make sure really carefully that it, it fits behind here without peeking over. It doesn't hang over because you don't want it to hang over because it will not look good. So I cut it just a little bit shorter so that it doesn't look bad. So what I'm gonna do, I'll leave this piece laying right here and I'm gonna put my Tombow on this side um, around in this area. So we'll need it up to about here and then I'm just going to kind of put Tombow in between and around these pieces, so. Okay. And then we'll just add this on here. Like that. And press it down. Okay, so does that look good? I love it. I haven't done the Christmas trees yet. This is the first time, so I think it looks really good. Okay, so this one, I'm just gonna orient my circle so that the pattern is facing the same way as the sweater pattern, so it isn't like off wonkers like that. I like it so it's like straight. And I'm gonna add Tombow around the collar area right here, okay? And then I'm going to add my circle on top of here, making sure the patterns kind of match up, like they're all kind of going vertical, the stitching. And then I'm just kind of pressing on the circle to make sure it's like matching up with that neckline. And then, I don't know where I stuck my scissors. All right, they are back. So then I'm just gonna come on the back side here and trim this. And this probably, um, if you were really good about making sure it was like a, a perfect half circle when you were doing this a circle collar, you probably have an extra one of these for an extra bag. So you don't need to do um, donuts each and every time. And on this piece, you probably have another um, room for another 3 8 inch cuff piece. So this one you could do for every second bag. So that will save you a little bit of, of time. Okay, so to get these pieces on here, I'm just going to line up this corner with this corner. And I don't want it sticking out super far. So I'll just kind of line that up and it's gonna stick out just a little bit like that. So you can kind of see how much Tombow you need to put on here. So I'm just gonna kind of do this, make kind of a triangle of Tombow there. Line up those two corners first and then just kind of angle it out just a little bit. We wanna give the illusion of arms, but we don't want it to stick out too, too far, right? Okay, so there's the first one. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the other side. And then the key will be get that corner in there. And now you're gonna try and match up kind of the same angle. So they, so it looks even. And then just press down on there. Look at that. We made ourselves a sweater. So cool, right? All right, let's bring the box piece back in. And we're going to now bring everything together. So first of all, let's add <clears throat> our sweater piece over here so we don't have to worry about that, adding that piece um, afterwards. So we're gonna go on this side here where there's the skinny tab piece and we'll put Tombow on here. Okay. 
And then we're going to add the bottom right along here. And I want to put it just right above the score line. Just kind of match it up. Press down. Okay, I just think the stitching on this is just so wonderful. It's just, it adds so much depth to it. I just love it. Every time I see it, it makes me smile. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is these two tabs down here are coming in like this. You see that? So we need Tombow, you know, just make sure you figure out which side the Tombow goes, goes on. So I'm going to just bring these in and put Tombow on both of these square pieces. And then we'll bring these in one at a time and just kind of make sure it's even here on the side. I don't know if you can see it, just make sure it looks straight and then press down. Then bring the other one in and press down. Okay, so now we have these ones right here and I can, I'm just gonna fold this back, okay? so you can see it a little better because so this is the inside here of the sweater box or bag it's a bag a box I'm not sure what to call it but it's it's basically it looks more like a gift bag than it is a box because the box doesn't really close so we'll put Tombow along those two skinny sides and then we're going to bring this together and line it up just make sure it looks good and lines up nicely and I know I have Tombow on one side, but I'm just going to worry about one side at a time. And I'm putting my hand inside here and running it along that seam and pressing down a little bit to make sure that it's like adhering. Okay, like that. And the white piece down here, you, you will see that, but it's so far into the bag and you're going to put tissue paper and things inside there. I don't really think that it really makes a, a big difference that you see a little white down in there. And it makes it easy because you don't have to add a whole bunch of different pieces. You don't need to cut out a special neckline here because this is open, right? It's going to look like a neckline. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Run my finger along the seam on the inside. There's plenty of room. Okay. All right. And there it is. So just dimensions wise, so in case you're curious how much space you have in here, it's four and a quarter inches, five and a half inches tall, and two inches deep right here. Okay, so then um, let me grab the things that I'm going to put inside here. I grabbed myself a piece of tissue paper and I kind of cut it up a little smaller than normal. Let's have a look at how big the piece is, just in case you're curious. You might want to make your pieces bigger or smaller. Um, I cut mine down a little bit, so 12 to here. It's about 16 inches wide, the piece. 16 inches, uh, 16 by 10 is what I cut my tissue piece down to. So um, grab your snacks. I think, you know, I, I am a baker. I do love to bake. So um, you could make, you know, gingerbread cookies or your favorite Christmas cookies, like maybe they're smaller. You can place them in a cellophane bag um, and you can um, put them in here instead of buying something. Or if you have a favorite snack um, that you want to put in there, maybe, maybe you're customizing it to the person. Maybe they love Oreos. Put Oreos in there, right? Um, I love this uh, Land of Lake. Um, cocoa it's wonderful I'm going to put the peppermint stick in there afterwards because it tends to shift around and then um, I'm just going to kind of bring this together and then put it inside here bring it down okay and then you can slide your peppermint stick or your um, candy cane in there as well okay and then just to finish it off 
I cut myself one of these little scallop circles. Let me figure out which size it was if you want to use the same one. I think it was this one. Yeah, it's the third smallest scallop circle of the layering circles. And that fits the um, greeting that I'm going to use from that frosted gingerbread stamp set. Wishing you a Merry Christmas if you want to use the same one. And this is just going to finish off the bag. I'm going to just stamp this right here on the circle. Okay, it's the same color ink. I'm only using one color of ink on each box. So I used real red on the other one and this one is um, shaded spruce. And we're going to add a bow. And I wanted to talk to you about my bows. Um, so I, I chose to use shaded spruce because um, I think it's it's a dark green, but it's not super dark. I didn't have matching shaded spruce ribbon though. So you've got two options for creating a shaded spruce ribbon. If you wanna make it exact, um, take a ribbon um, like this one. This one is um, the soft succulent ribbon and I colored the soft succulent with a shaded spruce Stampin' Blends. And so this is the color right here. But if you are, if you are not wanting to do that, you know, you want a ribbon that's already made, I suggest using this um, Evening Evergreen. Even though this is shaded spruce, Evening Evergreen is really close in color. So if you wanna just look at the two differences, Evening Evergreen is a little darker. Here's my little, um, my little stamped piece. So I think you could use either one. I'm gonna use the one that I colored for Shaded Spruce today, but I wanted to show you two different options. I put the Evening Evergreen um, link in my supply list because I figured that was the easy option that most people would wanna take. But if you're nitpicky, you want an exact match, then choose a lighter color like the Soft Succulent, or you could either use, even use, um, uh, where is it? Pale Papaya, I believe. This one would also color um, very well into the correct shade. So either choose either one of those ribbons and then you can color them and have an exact match. Okay, then we're going to take a mini dimensional and stick it on the knot. I'm liking mini dimensionals a little bit more for the, these bows rather than the mini glue dots because I feel like they stick just a little bit better and hold the bow a little longer. So I'm just putting that right at the top of the circle like that. And then I'm going to add, I don't know if I like the placement of that. Well, fix it in a moment. Okay, so put a little bit of Tombow on the back of your circle and then just kind of add it over to one side of your box. And there you go. And I think that makes for a really kind of cute finished box, just adding the greeting like that. And then you can see right here, how cute is that, right? I love that. It's just so wonderful. And you know, I think, you know, with these little, with these little dies right here, if you wanted to make them for a display, I would maybe use one of these snowflakes and also make a blue sweater. So you could have red, green, and blue sweaters, and the blue sweaters would have the little snowflake dies. And I think that would be like a fabulous, cute display a great way to give out some bake goods you know because you don't have to bake a ton that way you have like a, a smaller container but the container is like this really cute box um, and then you can customize it too if you don't want to use Merry Christmas um, you could choose whatever greeting makes you happy um, to put on there so I hope you like those boxes I think they're just really cute and they're not super hard 
let me go and talk to you for a little bit. Um, just um, in case you're new to me, um, hello and welcome. And um, I would love it if you give me a thumbs up or leave me a comment or subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I really appreciate that. If you're looking for the supplies I use today, I have a link over to my blog. I've actually also dropped the supply list at the bottom of this, um, this description of this video, so you have them there too. But if you want pictures plus the supply list, hop over to my blog, and um, that has everything that you need over there. And um, just as an aside, I always reward my customers for ordering with me. Um, a $15 order will get you a free tutorial. Um, for my paid tutorial collection and a $50 order this month in October of 2021 will get you a package of the garden gems sent to you in November. All right. I'm going to see what you guys are up to today. See if you have any questions for me. Good morning, Ellie and Dee. They are my team members. Hello. Um, good morning, Pat. Good morning, Birgit from Germany. I love it when I have Birgit from Germany. Hey, hello. Um, good morning, Kristen from Colorado. Uh, Pat asked how my son is doing. He's doing great and he's gonna be here tomorrow. I'm so excited. I didn't wanna get too excited when he told us he was gonna come in um, for Canadian Thanksgiving. Canadian Thanksgiving, for those of you who don't know, is on Monday. And he said he was going to come up and I was like, I don't know how he's going to do that because he didn't want to take um, time away from work. Well, he's working remotely right now. So uh, he's he's on work term. He's a, a university student, but he's on work term um, for the fall semester. So he's going to work remotely from home for a week. So uh, I at first I didn't think it was gonna be possible for him to come. I thought that was kind of a pipe dream. So I didn't get too excited. But last week he's like, I'm coming up for a week and I'm like so excited and I'm half prepared, not really completely prepared. Um, but um, I, um, he's gonna come stay with us for a week. I'm gonna make a turkey. Uh, I've been um, scrambling to get all the supplies together for that. It's a little harder to do that in October in America than it is in November, but I'm slowly gathering everything I need. I got my fresh cranberries yesterday because I like to make my own cranberry sauce. And so we're going to have a Thanksgiving dinner. So I'm excited. So thank you for asking, Pat. He's doing great, and I will see him tomorrow. Good morning, Vera Blue from Tennessee. Okay, D says, would that sweater background stamp fit on a Stamparatus? Yes, it would. Yes, you could absolutely do it on the Stamparatus. And that might be, be easier for some people. I always forget about the Stamparatus. Um, the Stamparatus, of course, is wonderful, a wonderful tool for, um, I use it a lot for stamping multiples, but sometimes I forget about it for individual stamping, but yes. Can you just imagine how nice that would be if you were going to stamp a whole bunch of them and you could line it up and it could just be so easy. Yes, thank you, Dee, for reminding me about the Stamparatus. If you don't have a Stamparatus, um, it, check it out. It, they, they are a great stamp positioning tool. Uh, and Carolyn answered, yes, it should fit on the Stamparatus. Good, you're helping each other out. Um, okay. Pat said, on those dies, Miss Brenda, I'm not sure I totally understand those piece together ones. Do you have time to show me? If you don't, it's all good. Okay, so, oh, the piece together ones. Okay, so I, I get what you're talking about. So these ones right here are actually, oh, I need to switch my camera over. Okay, so these ones right here, let me grab a piece. Let me just show you. Sorry guys, I'm going over here and grabbing a piece of cardstock so I can show you. All right. So if you wanted a zigzag one, I wouldn't really recommend this particular one if you were mass producing. 
say I've already got this stamped in a collar, okay? So we're going to, instead of doing, um, instead of doing, oh, where did my other ones go? Okay, I don't, I don't know where my tree went. So we're gonna do, um, we're gonna do the snowflakes on this one. Okay, and I'm doing a bad job of lining up the patterns right now. All right, so let's grab my little post-it note again. Oh, I see where they all are. They're stuck to my post-it note. Okay, so, okay. So we're gonna run these through now. So you see right here, I've got, um, oh, sorry, you're a little bit off. It's actually cut my piece into pieces, right? So for this one, look at the cute little snowflakes. That would make such a cute blue sweater. And you can use these snowflakes pieces. Okay. So for this, you're going to either have to cut an extra like white piece and then patch those back together. So like you could cut two white pieces out of these and then stitch them back together or do I'm gonna just pop these down here like this so this piece right here would be like this this piece right here would be like this and this piece right here would be like this so what you would have to do is if you're gonna use your, you're gonna have to back up this piece anyway so you can see the pattern, right? So I've cut this piece now to four and a quarter, the backing piece by five and a half inches. So you can kind of see how much space you would need to leave. So if you didn't want the white going all the way up to the back and you just wanted to do a two and a half inch piece, you would do Take your piece and this one is going to come along the bottom like this so you're piecing it back together and I guess this is what I mean by piecing it back together and then this piece is going to come along here like this and you want to just make sure you leave the same amount of width as this one was, okay? And then this one, just make sure you have the right side. You're just gonna come along here and then just do this, okay? So you're basically, you're, you're piecing the front of the cardstock together. So you can see how this would be a little extra step if you were cutting those pieces and you had to kind of piece that together. But if you really like the zigzag pattern, you can absolutely do that. It's just gonna take a little bit more time. And that's just why I chose um, these ones because these just cut out little negatives rather than cutting the piece um, right across and in half. But these pieces too are just really fun pieces that you can add to to your cards so you know it's nice to have these pieces too so I hope that explains it a little bit better um, what I mean Pat so um, hopefully that will work 
Um, Fair Blue says, wow, this sweater is pretty. I like the way you made it so simple and easy. I will be making this sweater gift bag. Oh, yay. That makes me happy. That was what I was going for. Um, Bonnie says, I will make for Christmas for my bags of cinnamon sugar um, pecans I make every year. Ooh, that sounds lovely. Pecans are a wonderful question. Um, what is your suggestion in case you want to add handles? Okay, so that's a good point. So um, for a handle, I would use more of, oh, gain, moving, moving the camera over here. So if you wanted to make a handle, instead of having like handles that come off the front here like this, which you could do if you wanted to, I would suggest making a little hole in the side right here and then um, like make it small and then press the ribbon through and tie a knot like have a knot on the end like this before you feed the ribbon through like that tie tie a knot or maybe two knots and then you know you're going to feed the other end through and then you can have a little um loop like that right and then that can be your little handle for your sweater I think that would be the way that I would go I mean I suppose you could also do a loop you know in the front and the back but I think I want the focus to be on the sweater so I would just I would just add it to the side and then it's just one length of ribbon and then you can have a little handle for your your bag so I would just use the same ribbon that I'm using for the bow on the front and I would just use it on the sides with two little holes so that is what I would do Kristen I hope that helps all right um, oh and Kristen said she would cut straps of acetate that's another great idea like of that window sheet you could do that so the focus would be on on the bag on the cute sweater on the front that that's a great idea where's my face there's my face I'm back okay all right um so Pat said so the two dies do the same thing right yeah so the zigzags both cut in half and then this one is just a negative and so you do have duplicates of a couple of them you have duplicates of this cross one and you have a duplicate of the zigzag one so it's great because you can create that kind of fun pattern um Pat said a blue sweater would be pretty. I think it would be awesome. I always like to, like if I'm creating a display, I always like to create with three different colors because I think they play off each other nicely. But I think also since people kind of expect red and green at Christmas, you could do red and, and green ones and that would look absolutely perfect and fine. Um, I only have the red and green colors on my supply list right now. But if you want to, my recommendation on blues, you can always message me or text me and I will pull out the blue color that I think would work nicely with, with the two other colors. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me this morning. I'm glad I could answer some of your questions. And if you have more later on, just pop them into the comments and I will answer them. I hope you have a great weekend. If you're in Canada, happy Thanksgiving. Um, or um, some people will be celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day on Monday. Um, we, I'm in the Boston area and um, the marathon has been postponed for a very long time. Um, normally we run it in spring and it is running through here just a few blocks away from where I live. So maybe my son and I will head out on Monday and, and go um, uh, watch the, some of the runners and cheer them on. Um, if we can get a little space, that's hopefully, um, it's, a, it's a long route so we can get our own little space so we don't have to be near too many people. We're still kind of concerned about um, COVID. Um, so um, uh, cheer on those runners for the Boston Marathon. But I hope you have a nice weekend, whether it's a long weekend or not. Enjoy, do some paper crafting. And I will be back with you next week with another project. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care. <laughs>